Well, hello there, everyone. Um, just so you know, this is completely unscripted. I was really happy to be part of something that is truly for the youth. So I wanted to do it as uh, honest and authentic as I could. Uh, the subject uh, that I'm going to talk to you today is about privacy. And I know that privacy is not an interesting subject. But the fact is that we all use social media. We all use messaging. We all use some type of digital communication today, and that's why it matters. Now, if at any point this gets boring, just know I have prepared a backup plan. You can find Waldo while I speak, and I can feel engaged with my uh, audience. So, in Silicon Valley, there's a saying. It goes, if you're not paying for the product, then you're the product. What does this mean? It means that when someone is selling you something for free, is giving you a service for free, let's say YouTube, and you can watch a video for free and you're not paying it, well, they're getting something out of it. Maybe not in terms of your money, but they're doing it in terms of your information. And um, today, information is power. It's not only power, it is money, okay? Um, and I'm gonna show you a few examples of how this is taking place in the different aspects of our digital life. Um, the first example I'm going to go with is uh, um, browsers. So um, as some older people here might know, the first browsers that were created were actually sold for a lot of money. You would have to pay to have a web browser on your computer. Right? Um, today, you have so many browsers that are competing against each other, and you don't get it. Why? Why are they competing? It's free, free to download. Well, there's something called cookies. And these cookies, they store data of your, all your, your surfing uh, history. So basically, when you're searching for the new iPhone, and you Google the iPhone, and you go into Apple, all of a sudden, you go to Amazon after that, and you're seeing suggestions for the iPhone. And it's the first thing I got here, sponsored posts, OK? So what's going on here is they're basically taking your search data, Okay, and they're selling it to retailers in Amazon and basically having them pay to be on the top of the page based on your search results. So basically everything you're searching for is public. Okay, now we may not mind a lot about what we search for, um, but there are other examples. For example, Facebook. Okay, you ever done a quick search for that dress that you were looking for and you didn't buy it, but then all of a sudden it's chasing you in Facebook and everywhere you go? Um, well, we're, we're already accustomed to this. I can tell that by your faces, some of you don't even know this page because you only look at it on your phone, if you do. Um, but the reality is that it gets, it gets scary because everything you write on Facebook, everything you message you, every like that you do, everything is, everything is being measured, every single thing. And they're, be they're being very, very careful on, on segmenting every user and putting you into buckets of people that fit a certain criteria, okay? Um, where does this get scary? A year ago, I published an article, um, and it was about the change in terms of conditions on WhatsApp. Everyone clicked yes to it, I guarantee you. You didn't even read it. But there was a very fine print that said that Facebook has the ability to link your WhatsApp account to your Facebook account and use their data internally. They will not sell it to third parties, but then again, why would they? They're the biggest competitor to Google. Why would they want to sell them the most valuable thing they, they own, which is your data? So being Facebook their own marketing platform, it would be only natural that the following would happen. Basically, this is the, the first beta test of the ads that you're gonna start getting on WhatsApp. This is real the things you see on Facebook, you're gonna start seeing on WhatsApp. And it's very scary because, of course, everything you write on WhatsApp is supposed to be one-on-one. -on -one. It's personal, it's private. Um, and though it's encrypted, the person, the, the entity that encrypts, that locks your information also is the one that creates the key. And you just gave them the right to open it, basically. So, where, do, where, do, where does this, where do I fit into this? Well. Um, email. Cool. So, we send about 270 billion emails a day. 
Um, there are about 3.6 billion email accounts in the world. That's half of, the, of, of humanity. Um, and email by far is the most uh, widely used formal communication platform. Let's say messaging is, is you know, beyond email, but when you are getting lab results from a doctor or you are getting flight reservations or uh, you name it, you need email. So you got some sensitive data, not just going out of your email, but going into your inbox. Now, Gmail, it's free. Most widely used email platform in the world. Um, and of course, as I said at the beginning, it's not really free. Turns out, Gmail actually reads every single email that goes into your inbox. Okay, they have the ability to do that. And because I made a booking uh, on Expedia, they were selling me ads for cheapflights.com or whatever.com it is. Um, and, and this really bothered me, okay? About two years ago, this really bothered me, the fact that I could send an email to my lawyer, for example, with a private document and anyone, literally anyone can intercept it and read it. Um, so I created something called Cryptext. And Cryptext is a very simple uh, parasite that works on top of your Gmail. Let's put it that way. So you use Gmail, and if you install Cryptex on your Gmail, then you can send an encrypted private email to anyone. So this is a, a little example that I got going. Screen on the left is showing an email, uh, a composing screen with the switch toggled on, so it's encrypted. And the one on the right, it's Cryptex is off. So it's not encrypted, and it's gonna go to my brother Mark. I'm giving him my credit card details so he can buy flowers for my mother for, for Mother's Day. Aren't I a great son? Um, and we're going to see how these emails look like behind, behind the screen. So this is an actual email. Okay, this is what an email looks like when you send it, when it goes through all the servers and it gets to your inbox before it gets beautiful and easy to read. You got the header, which is, is it contains the subject of the email, your email address, the person's email address, and the date. Okay? Then you got the body, the content of the email. And then you got the gibberish. We don't care about that. That's nerd stuff. But the body, as you can tell, is very clear and easy to see. You got the credit card details right there, okay? Um, now, let's look at that same email when it's sent with Cryptex. So you got the header, you got more gibberish, of course, but the body, there's really nothing there. It just says, you can't read from there, it says this email is encrypted with Cryptex. Please open, please open this email to be able to read the content. So the cool thing is that as a recipient, as a sender, you install Cryptex, but no one else needs to install Cryptex. You can send an email to anyone, they can read it without installing anything. And that's probably, probably the coolest thing about it. But there's something a little cooler than that, which has really saved me from some awkward situations. Um, so it turns out I didn't send that email to Mark, I sent it to the wrong person. Cryptex gives you this really cool button that says unsend, and you literally get to unsend the email and delete it from the person's inbox even if they opened it, okay? So in this sense, we're not just bringing security and privacy, but we're putting you in control of your data. We're, we're letting you control who can see it, when they can see it, and for how long. Um, I'm gonna bring Mr. Waldo again. Um, so our vision for Cryptex is ultimately stop being the parasite to Gmail uh, and expand to becoming our own email platform. So starting January, we're gonna be developing Cryptex.com Everyone's going to be able to download, to, to get an encrypted email address for private or work purposes. Um, and we're really excited to see how the market is going to receive it. There's actually only two other secure email services in the world. And um, I would say that recent events give us promising, um, a promising uh, vision that we might succeed at this. So, I really hope you had enough time to find Waldo. If anything, just remember, if you're not paying for it, then you're actually paying for it, okay? So remember that. Thank you very much for being here and for listening.